live from beautiful Snowbird, just outside of Salt Lake City, Utah, from Nerdtacular 2017. Please welcome Brian Brushwood. live or not but hey i'm brian brushwood and more importantly i'm here only as your hype man for my number one favorite one man microphone podcast in the entire gd planet ladies and gentlemen it's a uh, he's got guests come on put your hands together for the man who funded his second kickstarter in just over three hours Woo! Let's hear it for Justin Robert Young! On the day that we met on the internet, I asked her for a photograph. She sent it over to me, said, Keep going. Ugly ain't the half. Look at you. Uh, that's fine. Yeah. Fuck shushy, it. Shushy. Shushy. It's time for the show. It is. I mean, we're already. We don't want to be the ones who make it run late. <laughs> By the way, this is this is fun for me, Justin. I I I, I get to be Andy Richter tonight. This is. I'm just gonna sit over here and needle you occasionally. There we go. Right. Uh, no. This is uh. This is very very exciting. Uh. You know, Scott was talking to me the other day, and he's like, uh, you know, it doesn't seem like you have enough to do today. <laughs> so what do you say you do a one-man show right before your comedy podcast, uh, which I'm very, very grateful for. A uh, big uh, round of applause, of course, for Scott and everybody for putting this on. Corinne, David Michael. Yeah, I'll, I'll bring it up, because Scott always brings it up. Uh, whenever he talks about how, you know, the 10 years that his kids were when they started, and then now, where it's gone from, like, Nickelodeon to CW. Like, you know, they're, they're all, all, the, all, the, all the collective kids, they are all just these, like, uh, like, awesome adults now. Here's the show that we're doing today. It's called OPP. Oh, shit, I should have come into that song, shouldn't I have? <laughs> I, I, I was not prepared for how much it sounded like a church just then. <laughs> you said OPP, and the muttering was like, you know me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know me. So, uh, here's the conceit. And I'd be lying to you if I told you I put a lot of thought into it. So, fair warning. This is high probability. This is at least awkward, if not bad. Uh, but here's the idea. I've had people write in for the last several weeks to uh, the, the jury podcast, and I've selected four of the best stories that were written in. They all center around pain on some level, emotional, physical. Here's my experiment. What I want to do is find people in the audience to read these stories, but these are not just, uh, you know, f because you want to read something up on stage. Is, is now a good time to point out what OPP stands for? Other people's pain. Pain, yeah. Not what Tretch and Naughty by Nature were singing about. <laughs> Guess that is a key like differential. A property or... Other people's property. Another way to call that it That was originally what the Constitution was called. <laughs> <laughs> the Declaration of Independence was OPP. <laughs> Uh, so here's the deal. You need to understand if you're going to come up here and read these stories that these are not just things that you are reading. These are not comedy bits. Some of these are not really all that funny. We are going to do our best to make the most of it and make the, you know, make some jokes in the middle of it. But these are at times like gallows humor stories because, and I do believe this honestly, that gallows humor is the only true, honest form of humor. Because if we skirt around 
the pain, if we skirt around the ugliness, then we only give it power. And if we discuss it, and then make a cum joke about it, <laughs> then we strip it of that power. And ultimately, we live better lives. So what I'm going to do is read the little uh, headlines that I have come up with for each of these four stories. At which point, I want you all to consider this very carefully to stand up and volunteer yourself to read. Real quick. Yes, you're asking after you give your sermon, people see if they're called. Yes. <laughs> to come to the, yeah. Just double checking. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys think that you're down for that? <laughs> Amen, they say. <laughs> this is escalating very quickly. <laughs> oh my God. I was not prepared for that. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're goddamn well right, amen. <laughs> All right, so here's the deal. First story. It's called Countdown Europe. Count down Europe. Who wants to be the first person up on stage yeah, for OPP? Here. All right, uh, we'll open the bidding at five dollars. Five dollars. Who'll give me five dollars? <laughs> All right, so here we go. We have one. Uh, uh, you uh, and you say. Oh my. <laughs> Folks, I hate to be the one to fall in love with the first house I see, but uh, come on up on stage. Let's give him a round of applause. Real, real quick for the audio listeners, I just wish you could see how much of a Southern gentleman Justin looks at Is this Is that moment. why I'm getting the church calls? <laughs> it might be, might be. <laughs> well, now I do say. <laughs> We got a nice friend from Ireland over here. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, Brian got that old time religion right there. <laughs> he hopped up out of the seat, he was gonna ham bone. <laughs> All right, sir, uh, uh, I'm gonna stop you. Uh, uh, when things get interesting, but what I want you to do here, come on, sit, sit next to Brian here. You are uh, gonna be talking into- Sit at my left hand, son. <laughs> You're gonna be talking into, uh, into, into, into that mic uh, right there. This now is the story, Countdown Europe. Wait, I didn't get your name, by the way. What's your name? Uh, Alan. Alan. I can't Accent. really read that well, though. No, I'm not a good reader. <laughs> You're not a good reader. We'll see how she goes. Okay. <laughs> Let me also make this clear. If you volunteer to come up on stage to read these stories, it will involve reading the stories. No, 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 no. I feel like, uh, uh, I feel like you can handle it. Al Alan, real quick, you know, uh, I recently found out that I'm Irish. Uh, yeah, what, what bit? Uh, I mean, I, 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 I went to ancestry.com slash rogue. Oh, and shut used... the fuck up. Oh my God, honestly. But I feel I should take care of you. Uh, 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 is there a beer that we can get this gentleman? I have actually four beers under my chair over there. <laughs> <laughs> my brother. I'm not even joking. <laughs> it's, a, it's a stereotype, but uh, I, got, I got four beers. In my oh, chair. wait, hold on, hold on. The cavalry's here. <laughs> See, we all come together, we pray, and... <laughs> all right, now go ahead, go ahead, wait, wait, take, take, a, take a pull, take a pull. Let's all, let's all cheers, here we go. Here hey, we go. Here hey, go. oh, yeah, 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 cheers, mate. Cheers. Okay. Water in the beer. <laughs> all right, now, better or worse weeder, uh, reader, after you've uh, taken, that, taken that swig? We'll see. Let's go. <laughs> wait, hold on, real quick. Uh, 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 yeah, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, maybe it's the religion thing. Yeah, it's fine, it's fine. I, he sounds an awful lot like uh, uh, Reverend Jameson from The Leftovers. Keep going, it's fine. Okay, so Everybody should I just go ahead yeah. and read this? Yeah. So just go ahead, go ahead and read what's on there. These, these are, again, a real email sent in over the last two weeks. Okay, so it's entitled Countdown Europe. To accurately portray the story, I must ensure there is enough setup. It's summer of 2016, my sophomore year in college has ended and I'm about to embark on one of the most exciting adventures of my life, exclamation point. <laughs> I've taken in a full array of culture, made amazing new friendships, and saw things that I never dreamed a kid from the Midwest 
would be able to see. We are now on our way back to Copenhagen for one final night before we ship ourselves back to what we now refer to as the States. Our trip- Fucking sell out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Wait, no, wait. no, 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 him, him, this <laughs> asshole. <laughs> Whatever, you're, oh yeah, okay, I'm sorry, I'm in France for two weeks. Anyway, the state's over there, I don't know, the healthcare, uh, LOL. I've seen culture, you know. <laughs> What's amusing to me is that you're berating Alan. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> he didn't write this. <laughs> I went, no, 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 I'm berating Alan's words. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Well, Praise be to Alan. Praise, Praise be to Alan. Alan. Praise be to Alan. Praise be to Alan. <laughs> Can I get an amen? Yeah, yeah we can. Okay. No, I'm the one who's Thank supposed you. to do that. <laughs> I, I swear this never happens. He has sinned! <laughs> this Sorry. is sin of Odin right here. <laughs> it's good, it's good. This is great. Uh, I believe I was All right, I'll tell you what. We're going we're gonna to skip through here just because I've, I realized that I did not do my job in editing this stuff. So do me a favor and uh, uh, yeah, turn to page 75. Your, flip, flip in your hymnal. Uh, <laughs> So you're gonna start right there. Uh, in the midst of this story, uh, this kid who uh, spent all this time in Europe and has enjoyed European food has had his first McDonald's hamburger and is now going to visit his friend's family. And so we start We're gonna right be doing there. lines one, two, and four, starting with his mustache, it smiles upon me. <laughs> You heard the man, go! So, I need cues here, hang on. Okay, so apparently he's had a, whatever, what he said. Yeah. Here's where things start to take a turn. Remember that food I grabbed? No one does. <laughs> yes, no I do. Knows, but... I just told you, whatever, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, well, as I should have expected, but hadn't thought through, the greasy mess I just woofed down was not setting well on my stomach. Praise be to Alan. <laughs> Alan. Power Alan. through, power <laughs> through. <laughs> My body had gotten used to what it's become accustomed to over the last several weeks, and I didn't like what I just introduced back into the ecosystem. With our friend still being on the phone, I didn't want to be rude, but I felt I needed to get his attention so that I'd know where the restroom was. I personally found it rude to just up and wander around this gracious host's house looking aimlessly for a place to do my business. <laughs> uh, Excuse me. As I'm starting to physically sweat quite profusely, I try to gain our host's attention. My travel companion sees that an inappropriate, this as an inappropriate since he is on the phone and she proceeds to just say, just find the bathroom. All right, from here, we're gonna skip forward again. Uh, he takes a big old greasy shit. Uh, <laughs> this so is start shockingly right there. close to Methodism. <laughs> <laughs> This is from a Methodist, for the record. <laughs> so am I. I mean, Did we just become best friends? <laughs> oh, honestly, in my mind, I heard Methodism as in method acting, and I thought one of you was shitting yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for the big finale. <laughs> uh, as I finish taking care of things, my world begins to turn upside down. The toilet will not flush. I then realize that the water in the sinks will not turn on either. My mind is racing and I'm thinking, what's going on? <laughs> there was toilet paper. Why would there be toilet paper in a non-functional bathroom? <laughs> Granted, there wasn't any water in the toilet, but over in Europe land, there is many different, like, many differences like that, and they seem to be all about watery efficiency. All right, now let me ask you this. Yeah. Since we did pick somebody from Europe, is it common to shit in a waterless toilet in Europe? Absolutely not. <laughs> we, have, we have less water. Like, we don't have a swimming pool where we can just see things floating around, but yeah. we have less. But there's something. Yes, yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. There's a little water in the pool. <laughs> How do you get rid of it otherwise? I mean, I don't know. This guy's gonna lay Maybe it the hard way. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll be honest though, I probably didn't pay attention to that from the start as I was quite focused on the mission at hand. At this point, our host was off the phone and he informs me that this is a newly renovated bathroom that has not yet had a toilet or fixtures hooked up. I'm feeling... 
This sounds suspiciously like somebody wandered into an Ikea and shat in the demo toilet. I quite believe that is exactly what has happened. <laughs> Except instead of an Ikea, it are, it's two sweet Danish parents. <laughs> which is where they are right now. So indeed, all right, so we are all caught up. This man has taken a gigantic, hairy, greasy shit in a toilet that has no water and is not functioning at all. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, uh, keep going, keep going. I'm feeling like the worst kind of person and starting, to th <laughs> and starting to think ahead to how the hell was I going to fix what I have just done to their new toilet? <laughs> I mean, let's be honest, you can probably imagine the state of the affair, and it was a hundred miles south of good. I asked our hosts how to say, I'm the biggest dumbass in Danish, so that I can appropriately convey my feelings to, this wonderful, to his wonderful parents that are downstairs. Throughout my time in Denmark, I have gained a great sense that the Danish were very inviting and a wonderful people. Oh, fucking blow them, Jesus. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> this was strongly affirmed in the moments that shortly followed. I was as red as a stoplight due to the embarrassment, but instead of being upset, my host and his parents had made the biggest fit of laughter ever. Well, maybe good for them. This <laughs> Wait, hold on. Do you, do you, does that not ring true to you? Are you shitting me? <laughs> so, all right, sorry. Imagine, imagine. Uh, do, you, do you have a wife or kids? I do have a wife. She's over there. A wife? Okay. Imagine so, how uh, she feels right now. Just but no kids. Let, let's she, imagine she that this married. exact same situation has happened, right? You, you and your wife, you're downstairs. You have a, a, a daughter that's brought home this uh, American foreigner. You shit in your non-functioning toilet and left the gigantic mess uh, up there. What is your reaction? Well, I would have made him clean that shit up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. You guys might not have been uh, uh, too too far apart. Maybe. Yeah, keep going. Just keep give me going. Some fucking gloves. <laughs> so wait, so but but no like no niceties, no like oh well you know it happens like there's literally bumper stickers that it say happens. it like it happens <laughs> it doesn't happen shit happens yeah no I mean well you don't you don't yeah you normally I been angry about it but I would have been like you know you gotta clean that shit up yeah <laughs> well, I mean but even right now you're very stern you're like you're like hey listen in case you a, were this thinking this is like a shit in my dry bowl like, like, <laughs> who wouldn't be stern. You make a fair oh, point. Just, you know, okay. oh, apparently the... <laughs> it would never happen. No, never. It's not a sitcom. It's shit in my bowl. <laughs> I mean, praise be to Alan. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no, no, no. All right, so, so here we go. Uh, let, let's start with what followed. Uh, what right up there. followed? was two Danes and my foolish self. Lines one, two, and four. <laughs> Beginning with, I flushed. <laughs> <laughs> what followed was two Danes and my, self, my foolish self carrying this emphatically destroyed new toilet downstairs and out the backyard. We used a garden hose to clean it out and got everything back in order. It was not a fun situation and I will stray away from the details. There we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Alan. <laughs> Praise be. Praise be to Alan, sir. What would you do, all right? Somebody came up there and uh, shit in your dry toilet. I gotta be honest, the entire time I heard that story, I was entirely in the father's role the entire time and I was loving every second of it. I hope that the first time my teenage daughters bring a boy home, he shits and has to come admit to me he just shat in a dead <laughs> toilet. <laughs> Oh wait, this is like a whole new idea. Oh my god. And then and then me and then me be like, oh well, you know, we've never encountered this ever, ever before. Ever. All of our family is potty trained. But I can now, just imagine in, in four years, you just from you're smirking on your bed, right? <laughs> and you just hear Did you just dry ball mark? I was like, sweetheart, Penelope, dear, I can't control when the water does and does not flow. <laughs> no, Dad, you literally can. It's this handle called the boyfriend killer. 
All right. We've got, uh, we've got one. It's my favorite one. It's called Careful What You Wish For. Who's into reading Careful What You Wish For? Careful What You Wish For. Mm. Hey, listen up, assholes. Read between the lines. He's literally shouting over and over again, careful what you ask for. I mean, honestly, folks. <laughs> All right, let me take a look here. Let me take a look. You want to know one? I'm going to go off the board. Wherever Carrie, the come on up here. <laughs> I just have a feeling. I know what's in here. And I know that you are. I know that you are going to get a an absolute uh, kick out of this. Uh, so here we go. This is careful what you wish for. Uh, yeah, this is a good choice. <laughs> okay. Okay. Can I? Yeah. Can no. 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 Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. 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 Up until January 2016, I weighed almost 400 pounds. I was. Testify. I was married. Wait, you can't just yell testify randomly. Testify. Like, it's not just a place where when people stop talking, you just scream testify. Again. again. <laughs> just, That's when you yell yes, it. Yes, can. It's fine. I mean, for the record, they're not even our words. We're reading somebody else's words. And apparently I'm a man, so that's interesting. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, Carrie's oh, a man. Keep going, Carrie's keep a man. Going. Yeah, oh, sorry. Okay, it says, I was married, a father, worked full-time, but was depressed and out of shape, couldn't move very much, and felt like I was wasting my life away. So in January 2016, I had gastric bypass weight loss surgery, because I've had this done, you son of a bitch. Oh, Jesus. Which, <laughs> well, which since hold then, on, wait a minute, I'm going to write up my own story. I didn't know that Carrie <laughs> had gastric bypass surgery. Yep. Since then, love, I've lost almost Justin 200... I typing on the <laughs> written paper. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to work this out. Return, return, return. <laughs> Save to PDF. <laughs> Since then, I've lost almost 200 pounds and feel great all around. It's been nothing but good things with the exception of one piece. All right. I'm going to pause right there. Because I believe that right now, this story is going to take a turn. Oh, it's, it's taking a turn. Yes. And it is something that, although, uh, uh, as you've said, uh, there are elements that you can identify with, I don't believe you'll one. be able to no. identify with what comes next. Not this one. But I'll go there, because that's what I'll Carrie, do. Carrie, you ready? please read. Okay. I've always been endowed, which is something I was Pause. always Pause. Wait a minute. Right. Slower. So you go, whoa, 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 yeah. whoa, 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 whoa. Say whoa. it again, slower. And, and do your best Sam Elliott the entire time. <laughs> like you're sitting next to the little Lebowski. I've always been endowed. <laughs> <laughs> Now you go! Now you go! Testify. Testify. Which is something I was always pretty happy with. However, when you lose a lot of weight, it turns out your penis extends further from your body due to fat deposits in your pelvic area. Pause. <laughs> Read that again. I, again, I can't emphasize enough. Like Sam or Elliott. Or Sam Elliott? <laughs> yeah. God, it's not Roadhouse. Okay. Um, let me see. When you lose a lot of weight, it turns out your penis extends further from your body due to fat deposits in your pelvic area. <laughs> That's good. All right. I want well, an honest show of hands. An honest show of hands. How many people in this room knew that when you lost a lot of weight, your penis extends from your body? There are so many hands! I did not, did you know that? I suspected. You wait like, during one experimentation. <laughs> I, 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 it just makes sense, right? I mean, I, I mean, I sure. I'm not like disputing the physics. Like, I, I'm under cross examination. I don't like this. No, I, I guess I. It never and and granted, all right. And this is where you know Brian and I are are skinny assholes, and so like this is not something. What was that? It goes up inside your body. It goes your body. up inside your body? Are you describing how sex works? <laughs> <laughs> like we're That's three? how sex works? <laughs> Did you know this, Carrie? No. 
No, you did not. not. Nope. Neither I did I. I know a lot about penis, but I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, what, what I'm imagining is that... <laughs> forgive me. Uh, I... Yeah. You need okay. to stand so, up okay, and show uh, the uh, We have a visual Come aid on. here. Real quick, real quick. Here's what I was just told is this is a fat man. This is a thin man. Yep. A lot of agreement and somebody shouted science. <laughs> All right, but, but just, just for, for the audio listeners, the, the, uh, the yeah. scientific okay. illustration <laughs> was, was that the fat man had a smaller dick than the skinny man. What? No, no, the, the dick was always the same length. It's just that fat was covering more fat. or whatever. So, so here's my question. So as the fat recedes, okay. more, more, more of the oh, coastline oh, okay. becomes uncovered. Ta- time out, time out, coach, um, uh, uh, Reverend Justin. Uh, yeah. Okay, the impression I got we from We have this- so many dick experts here tonight. Yeah. It is just nothing but an, an absolute hailstorm of dick advice and science. The letter, the letter very much seemed to imply that the act of becoming fat caused his dick to get longer, and now that he's lost the fat, the dick can finally show no. its extended length. No, 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 He no, was no, no. always huge. No, it was... Okay, a bunch had, of people saying, yes, he definitely was huge the entire time. All right, so he has said, and I've read this many times... <laughs> Many times. Uh, that he has a gigantic dick. Rain or shine, snow or sleep, it makes its appointed run. 400 rounds. to 200, yeah. Right? But since he's lost a dramatic amount of weight, fat deposits have combined with gravity to make his dick even longer than it was before. It is just, it is, it is slowly <laughs> kind of descending further and further to a comical length. Okay, just tell me the next letter is about somebody complaining that he has too much money. <laughs> well, here we go. I'm glad you said that. So let's go ahead and keep reading. Again, it's great. My wife loves it and it's all great. I feel and look better than I have in many, many years. However, this is not just a jerk off. I sit on my dick a lot. Okay, hold on, time out. Pause. (laughs) More Sam Elliott, Jesus. Real quick, Carrie, be honest. When he says this is not a jerk off, is he talking about his ego or as an actual move to come to orgasm by sitting on his dick? I don't know this particular gentleman. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go I with... I like the way you instantly went into Sam Elliott. My ex-husband was Asian. I don't know this dude. <laughs> oh, shit! Oh, shit! I'm gonna keep running until I realize that's racist or not. Still running. I don't know a lot of guys who sit on their dick intentionally. For fun. I think that would be kind of, if your tough game is great, then maybe that's an issue, but I, I don't know that that's a is well, typical problem. Apparently, is tough game a thing? Yes, it is. Yes. All right. I knew that was going to be you. <laughs> yes. tough, tough game's game a strong. thing. Yep. Uh, sits on his dick a lot, this guy. How does that even happen? Apparently it's a... It. Well, he's got a comically large dick. This man is, is working with like a... Like, you know those like fake peanuts that the snake pops out? He doesn't All dress dick. right or left. Do you, do you think on his Tinder profile he writes, you know, dick size colon comically large? Yeah. <laughs> dick size party sub. <laughs> Sorry, Everyone's just thinking of a party sub now. It's fine. <laughs> That's good. All right. Keep going. It says it hurts like hell and embarrassing when I'm at work and sit on it. Also, sex is a lot. Real quick, where do you suppose this guy works? And in what situation? Oh, he works he... in a call center somewhere. Oh, so no. he's on oh, yeah. the phone with he somebody. He works in a call center. He's definitely like coming back from lunch. On. Yep. And he sees his phone ringing. Yep. And it's, he's it's like, red he's like, you. oh, geez. and of course he's feeling great, man. He's 200 pounds lighter. That guy's doing like spin moves in the office, right? <laughs> Running to his like, like, oh man, this is great. Oh yeah, State Farm. This is oh! <laughs> Sh- 
John. What are you wearing, John? Oh, John. Yeah. And then Alan's on the phone. Oh, John, how you doing? Did you dryball me, you motherfucker? All right, keep going. Sex is a lot different when you have many more inches, and it hurts both parties a lot, unless you're careful. Like, that's going? yeah no that, and that was not you editing that editorially that's no, what he, that yeah, that's what he says yeah so Wait, apparently this is now for those of you keeping but, track hold on let me think about this because uh, okay so <laughs> inherently in all this conversation we are revealing our dicks are not this big no <laughs> this is not a shared problem no <laughs> we right. are from the outside looking in <laughs> um, all the big dick f blokes. Swinging them around like lassos, <laughs> roping each other for fun. <laughs> Here we are, meager Dick Brian and Jerbs. Meager. <laughs> I was hoping for efficient. I'll take meager. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, next to a T Rex, like, I'm, I'm gonna take that one. A back Jeep home. looks small. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Moral of the story, guys, when you ask whatever you believe in for a big dick, be prepared to sit on it and hurt everyone it touches a lot. I do not recommend sitting on your dick at all. This is the word of Alan. Praise be to Alan. Praise be to Alan. <laughs> Everybody give Carrie a big round of applause. All right. I feel like we have we have time, time for, for one to more. write a song about that. We've <laughs> oh shit! Do we want to do we want to go right into it? I mean, should we should we get somebody up who has a guitar and can maybe we, we can write a song about this? About about the the pain and suffering of having a, 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 a big dick. Yeah, uh, it'll be called "It Hurts for Both of Us" the first time. <laughs> no, uh, is he here? Yeah, we'll see. All right, well, here, hold on. Let's go ahead and skip through this last one real quick. As we, uh, oh no, is he here? Is he here? All right, then we'll scrap this one. Uh, are, are you sure? Ladies and gentlemen. I feel like this is gold. I feel like we should just keep oh, no, going this is with happening. all of this. Uh, wait, wait with, with the song or with the, with the? I want to read every word of all of these and sing songs about all of them. All and right. And also start a religion. Then here we go. Uh, Let's go ahead and uh, uh, do you think that you can, uh, I'll give, I'll give uh, Mike this mic. Uh, Mike, do you believe that you can, that you can write a ditty about uh, a, a man with a big dick who is lamenting his gigantic schlong? <laughs> it hurts the both of us the first time. <laughs> Seriously, it hurts the both of us the very first Ooh. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I don't mean to be so large. It's just God that's in charge. <laughs> <laughs> it hurts the both of us the first time. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike TV! I swear, if there's anyone who has a sacramental beer for all three of us, we would love to have them right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, Mike, uh, you're, you're going to come back on for, for Night Attack. One more time for Mike TV, everybody. <laughs> what a pro. Man, uh, like, like, he held up as in uh, tribute his guitar and pointed at the fact that he was about to disconnect it so the audio guy in the back could mute it in time. He's a pro. I know. So if he had a huge dick, he would never sit on it. He's that considerate <laughs> of, of everybody, including himself. He'd have a little coil, <laughs> like, a, like a garden hose. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, a little... It's getting a little more specific than I expected. <laughs> All right, we have one more. It's called Texas. Who on earth... Could read Texas. <laughs> Could it be this man right here? Yeah. 
you like a beer? Did you just multiply beer? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would testify. We definitely began the show with only one beer, and yet there is a plenty. <laughs> Texas. Just gonna jump right in here to a story about an unintentional kidnapping, drugs, cheating, tattoos, and a Taco Bell Long John Silver combo store. Here we go. Let's party. <laughs> This story begins in my freshman year of college. It's my one year anniversary with my then girlfriend, Kitty. <laughs> we made the decision to spend the day together, so I skipped my one class, pick her up early in the morning. About a week prior, a friend of hers died, and she wants to get a tattoo of their name. Texas. <laughs> I fully support All right, this. that's the... Hey, man. From, a, from a state that prides itself on its white trash, that is not just Texas. <laughs> But also Texas. But also <laughs> Texas. <laughs> um, uh, I fully supported this decision and offered to pay for the tattoo as an anniversary gift. Oh, One year anniversary. Texas. Your friend died. Don't worry, babe. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> so I get over to her place around 8 a.m., pick her up, and to my surprise, she's decided to bring a friend along. Slightly annoyed by the turn of events, but I agree to let her come with. Now, then I live in an area of Houston called Sugarland that totally... <laughs> Wait, hold on. <laughs> and you're like rumbling went through the crowd at the mention of Sugarland. Yeah. <laughs> How many of you guys know what Sugarland is? Yay. Uh, and if you were to summarize your feelings of Sugarland in one nonverbal sound, what would it be? <laughs> <laughs> that was shockingly unanimous. <laughs> Sugarland. She lives in Cyprus. They're, uh, they're, uh, the, uh, these are on the southwest and northwest of Houston, about a half hour to 45 minutes apart without traffic. So Texas. Uh, between these two destinations, there are at this time of the event no less than seven tattoo parlors. But we can't go to any of those, no. We have to go to Baytown on the motherfucking southeast side of Houston. At the very least, an hour drive straight through downtown. This guy is very angry about traffic. I mean, I, as somebody who grew up in Houston. That, so that is justifiable Legit. anger? Legit. Okay, so, so you read that and you are angry I, I, just I, I, hearing. To, to put it in perspective, like you enter city limits of Houston at 70 miles an hour and an hour later, you are still doing 70 and you are still inside Houston. It is insane. Yeah. Okay. About 70 miles? Yes. It's 70 miles. Thank you, math. It's going great. This is... Oh, fucking these math majors. <laughs> so again, annoyed but decide to go with it, being the doormat I am. About halfway there, I learned that the friend that she has decided to bring with is 16. I am at this point 21, and Kitty is 18. In the state of Texas, if you transport a minor across county lines without the express consent of their parent or guardian, it is concerned, uh, considered, all caps, felony kidnapping. Brian, are you aware of this law? Texas. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. child then proceeds to pull a bottle of Oxycontin. Oh. Uh, at this point, editorial note. Yeah, go ahead. It is spelled in this letter, Oxycotton. C O T T O N. So you think it was far more of a Joanne's Fabrics kind of thing? Like That's what I would like to think the PG version of the story is. Yeah, sure. It's 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 like pure white, uh, uh, clean uh, uh, cotton. Sure, yeah. Right. Oxycotton. <laughs> Pull a bottle of Oxycontin out of her purse with the, su with the same name, or with the name some gentleman with a different last name as her printed on the bottle. Oh, I'm saying it's a stolen prescription, I get it. Yeah. Uh, now I'm in my mother's car at this point because the two of us through my first couple of years in college shared a vehicle and I have a minor in the car and it is during school hours and she has drugs on her and if I get pulled over, I will fucking end up in prison. <laughs> so now I'm livid. 
and remain mostly silent on the way to the tattoo parlor, or the more appropriate description, random dude's scuzzy ass apartment complex. And when I say scuzzy, I mean this complex has no gate, has three parking spaces total, all of which are empty, and the door of, all, uh, the door of almost all the apartments have battering ram indentions. We pull in, Kitty pulls out the tattoo design, and it is not the same as we had agreed upon. <laughs> not the name. So again, to oh, wait, recap. Oh, hold on real quick. It does say it's not the name we had agreed upon. But, oh, wait, it is a name. Sorry. Never mind. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, so this guy dating this girl for a year. Hey, babe, your friend died. Let me make it up to you. Let me pay for, as an anniversary present, that person's name on your body. She is now at this scuzzy tattoo, uh, tattoo parlor, and it's another name that is being revealed. <laughs> Testify. Go ahead. Uh, let me see where we were. In boom, fact, boom, boom, dear boom. listener. Oh, it's not the name we agreed upon. In fact, dear listener, it is the name of the person whom a mutual friend of ours claimed Kitty had been cheating on me with. A claim that I brushed off since they provided no proof. Texas. Texas. <laughs> I am dead silent as she gets the name tattooed right over her breast. <laughs> 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 so sad <laughs> like uh, at what point do you sit there and watch it or, or do you leave I uh, no. I think we all want to believe we would leave right like in our in our heads we're just like what the fuck like I don't mark that's not who died okay to be honest like if anything you stay there right because if you left after MAR then she could say March Madness is the best. <laughs> and that's what could be on her breast. I mean, she's a big Longhorns fan, so. Ah, uh, yeah. March yay. Madness is the best. <laughs> she went in a really hot run of office pools, and now she's got to celebrate forever. I'm dead silent as she gets this name tattooed upon, uh, right over her breast. I paid for the tattoo. Oh, Texas. Texas, Texas. Uh, <laughs> to, which, to further illustrate the sanitary conditions of this decision, must point out that the guy doing the tattoo never stops smoking while doing the procedure. All right, Texas, not, not Texas. the time or place, yeah. <laughs> uh, so we get back in the car. It's now 3 p.m. Wait, hold on. <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, I didn't realize that this all took place from the hours of 11 in the morning to 3 p.m. <laughs> totally thought this was the middle of the night. Yeah. So, we get to oh, go yeah, back across school hours, sure. Houston during rush hour, about halfway back, me completely silent I mean, the whole hold on. way. Wait a minute, hold on. Just for the record, let's understand that both before and after a scene in which his girlfriend is getting another man's name who has been rumored to be cheating on him with is being tattooed on top of her titty. Wait. He is angry about traffic. <laughs> He is not angry about that. That is a sad thing for which he is witnessing. But can you believe motherfucking rush hour? <laughs> anyway, go ahead. So we get, we get to go back across Houston during rush hour. About halfway back, me completely silent the whole way. The two decide that we need to meet up with some of their friends who are going to a Taco Bell slash Long John Silver's combo store. <laughs> As one does. That may be the most Texas phrase I've ever spoken in my life. <laughs> Wait, is Long John Silver's popping in Texas? I, 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 there's a few of these. Nice. Yeah, A&W as well. Some get some hush puppies? Yeah, yes, sure. Get them <laughs> get tattooed. Why not? <laughs> now, that would be better if it was the Taco Bell, Long John Silver, and Scuzzy Apartment Complex where people get <laughs> random tattoos. Combo store that is across the street from the high school that one of them should be attending at that very moment. <laughs> Too angry to speak, I calmly, just silently agree. <laughs> we get there about two hours later. They talk to the group they're meeting. 
I order some food and turn back around, and Kitty and three or four of the members of the gang are gone, including Mikey, the guy whose name she just got tattooed across her chest on my dime. So I sit there, and I eat my food, and I wait. An hour later, she comes back. The stench of weed and sex could be smelled from across the room as Kitty and the gang come back in clothes just barely hanging on. I stand up, yell, <laughs> can I curse? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fuck you, across the restaurant and leave. She texts me 20 minutes later and asks why I left. <laughs> then proceeds to call me the most selfish person she knows. All during a time when I had given up caffeine. <laughs> There we go, ladies and gentlemen. That is Texas. That is Brian Brushwood. Well, I'll tell you what, folks. I feel like uh, that pretty much brings us to the end of this show. Did you guys enjoy OPP? Woo! Well, then how about this? We get one more big round of applause for my co-host, Brian Brushwood. Huzzah! Let's get a big round of applause for all the people who bravely wrote in their stories tonight. Yeah. Texas. My name is Justin Robert Young. Thank you guys so much.